Hello boys and girls, welcome to my channel, welcome to Benchart, time for Classic and for today what I have in here it is Terminator Resistance So Terminator Resistance, it is developed by Reef Entertainment, oh my god Oh my god, in case you don't know Reef Entertainment, hopefully, I do hope you never played any game from them until now Reef Entertainment, it is, they are the developers of Rumble the video game One of the worst games I ever played in my entire life it is an um, on-rails shooter, just like Virtua Cop or The House of the Dead. So you just need to point and shoot. Your character goes on and backwards and to the left alone. That's how an on-rails shooting works. I have nothing against on-rails shooters, but the game is the game that did develop was simply horrible. But I will talk about the game later. So this is the settings that I'm using in this game. My objective in here was to stay between 50 to 60 frames per second most of the time. So I decided to go with a mix between low and median and I'm using 84% of resolution scaling which means that the game it is being rendered at 900p and then upscaled to 1080p Alright, so the requirements This game asks for an IMD FX8350 So the fan and it is completely below this 8 gigs of RAM and an IMD FX560 or better the 560, I believe it's more in line with the same amount of performance that we have in here And they said that the median settings at ATP provide the 60 frames per second Although my test clearly doesn't show that My test did show me that I'm having an average of 47 frames per second with a 1% of 35 That's why I decided to go with my own settings with the custom between the low and median with 84% of resolution scaling by using this one, I have an average of 59 frames per second with a 1% low of 42. All the tests was conducted on the first mission. If you want to stay only above 30 frames per second, I do recommend you to go with the eye settings, but I do recommend you to drop down the texture quality to median and it will be okay. And yeah, that that's pretty much that. So yeah, I was successfully able to get a decent performance in this game with these settings. I mean... It, plays mostly above uh, 50 frames per second some other more demanding areas I have above 40s so it's very playable although I have some issues with stuttering this game do does stutter from time to time especially by the end of this video it started to stutter a lot I believe that uh, since I'm recording I'm using more VRAM than the usual, I'm using more CPU than the usual on graphic card recording puts extra stress into the system uh, I believe that it was because of the recorder that I got to stutter so much because without recorder, without recording I notice, I do notice some stuttering from time to time but not as severe as I have in this video All right, but most of the time yes the game does stutter I don't know what is the thing that I should blame for the stutter, I'm not really sure if I should blame for VRAM since the game it is utilizing all already 2 gigabytes of VRAM, so the graphic memory it is completely full. So it might be VRAM, but cannot can be too CPU because not all the games can take advantage of four cores decently, especially on Real Engine 4. And as you can see, despite the CPU is at 50 to 70 percent of usage, it doesn't mean that the CPU is not the bottom. So the CPU can cause, the lack of a strong CPU might cause centering and since we are below the minimum requirements in here in the CPU it might be one of the issues, alright? So yeah, that's that. So now about the game itself. <sighs> well, Reef Entertainment, congratulations guys, seriously, because you have gone from a shitty game to a game uh, slightly less shitty. So yeah, that's true. Uh, Reef Entertainment was able to evolve a lot from Rambo. I believe that this Terminator saw, uh, Resistance, despite this, it is not a good game in my personal opinion. I still think that they did improve a lot. They have gone from an on-rails on shooter to a game where you have big maps that you can explore and do the missions on your own way. So you have side missions on, for example, on this chapter. Uh, where you can traverse the map whatever the way you want, the crazy style and go do the secondary objectives if you want Decisions in this game have an impact in the story uh, I wouldn't say the story but an impact on the gameplay itself There is a crafting system which you can use to, well, obviously craft 
health, ca health kits and the ammunition, you know, stuff like all the other games out there. You have an RPG system where you can talk to characters and choose what your response and decisions. Again, decisions uh, have impact on your gameplay. And you have a skill tree and so where you can spend your uh, experience points from the secondary missions that you do. So all, th all of this sounds really good, but unfortunately it is not as well executed as we were hoping for. So the game... Ah, yes, and that is the Skyrim lockpick uh, puzzles. Alright, so th that's fine. All right, that's fine. They included a lot of stuff into this game, and this is very good in my opinion. But, I mean, the game it is pretty bland, the artificial intelligence it is straight bad, the enemies are not defying at all, even with the hardest difficulty you can kill the enemies, you know, very easily, the enemies just don't push t into you, so it is really easy, it doesn't stand, you know, the campaign is not memorable at all, so that's, that's a shame, because it, this is a game with a a normal campaign of 8 to 10 hours 8 to 10 hours so these type of smaller games should provide a campaign that we will remember for, for times you know cutscenes and events uh, that are really good but unfortunately that's not really the case and according to reviewers this game it is really bland people on steam despite most of the people are really satisfied with the game all of them criticized the artificial intelligence and the campaign itself. The campaign was really bland, nothing really memorable. Aside, there are some stuff like some stories from the side characters that are probably much better than the current history, the way that they put it. But one of the things that users said that I completely agree, it's the atmosphere. This game has a great atmosphere, especially the first mission that I'm not showing in here. The first mission had one of the best atmospheres that I had. It was really great. Even this second level, it is not that bad. Uh, it feels really great as atmosphere-wise. I think it's good. Although, as for the campaign itself, since not all the people are really satisfied with this, Metacritic gave a score of around 50s or 60s or 49. It was something like that. This is a pretty bad score. If you ask me and the game costs 39.99 so i think it's a little expensive for a game that you won't be remember at all in the next week so i'm not saying that the fans won't be enjoying this game because this is probably one of the best terminator games released until today but still it is not enough in my opinion they deserve better the terminator series deserves better and anyway, for all intents and purposes, congratulations Reef Entertainment for this. It was a huge jump from Rumble to this game, but still not enough in my opinion. So guys, that's all that I want to talk about Terminator Salvation. Hope you keep enjoying the rest of the video. And that will to see you soon. Goodbye. That plasma storage ain't a promising sign. Don't you guys usually destroy them on site?
Resistance? Nah, it looks like a scavenger. We aren't too far from our new hideout. Maybe it's the guy who lives there. You know what? I think I'll introduce myself. The least I can do for leaving us all those resources? Shit. I might even give him a thank you card. <laughs> you keep looking. 